Welcome to the Shepherd's Chapel Network Family Bible Study Hour with Pastor Arnold Murray. Wisdom is understanding God's Word. Pastor Murray's unique teaching approach brings God's Word alive with meaning as he takes you on a chapter-by-chapter, verse-by-verse study of God's letter to you, the Bible. And now here is Pastor Arnold Murray. Good day to you. God bless you. Say welcome to the Shepherd's Chapel. Welcome to this family Bible study hour. This is it. This is the day for Holy Communion. Um, for the fall uh, of the year 2010, you know how precious it is that our Father gives us this, these sacraments. And at this time at home there, you, if you don't have the sacraments ready at this time, you round them up and um, a cracker, and if you don't have the other element, wa even water. But take communion. And our Father knows what signifies, but uh, naturally you know the sacraments and what it should be. We thank our Father for that privilege. That will be, it'll almost be uh, at the end of this hour that we will partake of that, so you'll have plenty of time to aid yourself in that. Now. We ask a word of wisdom from our Father for these beautiful moments of taking this sacrament with our Heavenly Father, that He provided this whereby we have healings and we have that wonderful memory of the fact that Christ became our Passover, meaning under His blood the death angel must pass over your actions when you're a believer and when you are in Him how precious it is. We're going to begin today, maybe a little unusual for some for a fall fellowship, but we're going to begin with Isaiah chapter 53, verse 1. And verse 1 reads, Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? And that's a question. We're about to talk about the very birth of Christ, His coming. And uh, the story that you've got to believe is how it was in the beginning. Almighty God said, let us create man in our image, including himself. Therefore, he's talking about the beautiful birth of the only begotten Son of God and, and his walking with us. In other words, as it is written in John chapter 1, the Word became flesh and walked among us. And so it was that God himself walked with us, among us, when that particular thing took part. Verse 2, And he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. In other words, he's got it all. You know, here at this conception and at this birth, moments happen and moments go away. And so it is that this moment came to pass that Mary conceived and the Spirit instantly was in her. That moment passed away, but that Nazarene has never left us. He will not leave us. He will not forsake us. Time changes, but he is always the same. It is that promise. Do you believe that report? That's an honest, straightforward report of God's promise to us. You've got to believe God's promises. He stated it. It is written. End of story. Verse 3. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and we hid it, we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. It, it, the people didn't care. And there, again, the reason I mentioned moments, the, that moment and this moment are, are no different. People do not esteem him yet today. Many people don't. Praise God for God's elect and especially the very elect. And we just thank our Father for those that believe and that know the truth and are in the service of the living God. That uh, when you look around today, the majority of people, they don't esteem him. They don't believe that report. 
quite frankly, they would, it seems like they would want to, but they just can't quite come together with the fact that the, through the simplicity in which Almighty God operates, that this tender plant that was promised from the beginning came forth through that time and with that, that uh, particular um, visit, visitation from Gabriel, uh, Gabriel in the Hebrew tongue meaning man of God. God always sends a man or, or a person, no gender involved. Um, but even today, they, they don't see it. They don't believe it. And, and the sad part is they don't care. They, they have made, if, when you listen, you see that they have turned morality upside down. They seem to, people that have common sense, that protect and respect life, that respect an honest day's work for an honest day's pay, that, um, that it would seem that uh, that's looked down upon. You should get it for free. Oh, uh, that's not according to God's word. It certainly isn't. And so it is that uh, our Father is on the throne. They don't care as time marches on. Verse 4, surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. That is, humble before men. I mean stripped down, hung on a cross, carrying your sins. And did he complain? No, he didn't open his mouth. He didn't, I mean, he didn't complain at all. He didn't say, let's put this off. He could have freed himself. He could have called down 10,000 angels. Because this was Emmanuel, God with us. And even as they laughed and jeered and mocked, he carried your sins for you. He was paying that price that the blood of animals couldn't accomplish, but his blood could. The blood of, of um, the Son of God, the only begotten, God with us, Emmanuel. That he loved us enough that he did this for us. Friend, he did it for you, whereby you could have the forgiveness of sins and don't ever bring it up again. Verse 5, but he was wounded, he was pierced for our transgressions. He didn't have any. He was bruised for our iniquities, our shortcomings. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. And so it is. If you are a believer, if you believe that report that God promised this one would come, and that one was God himself, Emmanuel, God with us, that he took those stripes to his body. But when you ask with the anointing, you're healed. You know, how can you help loving someone like that? How can you help not uh, believe his, how could you not believe his report when that gift is made possible for all people today that his blood, he carried all those sins on that cross, paid the price whereby they are forgiven and washed away. And certainly um, uh, when it says his body received the stripes and we received the healing. That's the time to ask that he, for that healing, to ask him to touch you. Verse 6, all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He carried it quite well. You know, um, sheep, if you're not careful, can drift away. They can, I mean, circle right out of the camp. And certainly um, uh, when, when they get di distracted, a wolf can have them right real easy, or even they can, um, in their own way, thinking of their own personal self, they forget about Christ's way. And, and that is, like uh, when Christ was on the cross paying this price for us, how many stayed with him? 
Even Peter denied him thrice before the cock crew uh, before the, that morning. And poor Peter, I think he, that happened as a lesson to us because Peter was a man of God and he was strong. But they left him. They scattered, except for a, few, a handful of women on a hill nearby. He was alone, forsaken on that hill. And unfortunately, you can see why that our people are referred to as sheep because that's what they are. A sheep is a very clean animal, and it always follows the shepherd. And the shepherd is the one who feeds them. And our shepherd was on that cross, and our shepherd paid that price, whereby anyone then that wishes to participate, all you got to do is talk to him. And if, if you're honest, he'll accept you and you become a part of that fold. And you can go into that sheep cut and have peace and rest there. That's the way he is, and he laid it on himself for our sins. Let's go with the next verse, please. Verse 7, he was oppressed, and he was afflicted. They beat him, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shears is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. Do you understand, this was written about 700 years, 600, 600 and almost 700 years before the crucifixion. And here you have the actual acts that he would perform when he was delivered up. Pontius Pilate even said, don't you understand they're trying to do you in? Can't you say something? <clears throat> and he didn't whimper, he didn't complain. Do, do you really know why? You should know him well enough to know why. He was doing it for you because you have shortcomings. He loves you. He did not wish that you would go to hell. And there had to be a release for the sins you commit. And he, as only our Father through the Son could do, took upon himself that right to pay that price whereby forever we would have those sins washed away. He didn't complain one iota. Verse 8 to continue. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living, for the transgressions of my people was he stricken. Not for his own, but for our people. Who's going to declare his name? His children will. His, uh, that is to say, God's elect. We will let that tower ring from shore to shore and from land to land that he loves all his children, wherever they may be, that he paid that price, that only if they will repent and believe this report, as verse 1 stated, then they are in good standing. Verse 9, and he made his grave with the wicked. Two malefactors hung on each side of him on that cross, and with the rich in his death, uh, because he hath done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. He was buried in a rich man's tomb that had never been occupied, his own uncle, that is to say, his mother's uncle, Joseph of Arimathea, and uh, whom he had spent a great deal of time with from 12 years on. Uh, history documents that. This prophecy coming to pass, why? Well, God promised it. And when God makes a promise, if you read it, that's the way it happens. 10, yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. He shall see his seed, his children, offspring. He shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. It pleases God for one to repent and for he to love them enough to take them in his arms and forgive them. Verse 11, he shall see of the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied by his knowledge. 
That's something you must acquire, my friend, his knowledge. That's what this word is. Shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. He does it. He doesn't complain. Twelve. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he hath poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sin of many, and made intercession for transgressors. That intercessory prayer is still there when you make it. Our Father loves his children, and he always takes care of his children. He provides, he gives, and he obeys. New Testament, chapter 10, the great book of Hebrews. You know, when I read that 53rd chapter of Isaiah, and I think of, uh, you could have said he was lonely on that cross. No, he, he really wasn't, because he knew he was doing that for his children. You see, that was Emmanuel, God with us. Chapter 10, the great book of Hebrews, verse 1. For the law, having a shadow of good things to come, and not the very image of the things, can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually make the comers thereof perfect. The blood of animals won't cut it. Okay. Verse 2, for then would they not have ceased to be offered, question, because that the worshipers once purged should have no more need, no more conscious of sin, but guilt-ridden world still exists when the blood of animals, it's not going to cut it. Verse 3, but in those sacrifices there is a remembrance again made of sins every year. That old guilt just keeps hanging in there. For, for it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. It was just, it was a foreshadow of the one that would come this is why Christ, our Messiah, became our Passover. Because with what he accomplished on that cross, that that is wicked must pass over your family when you use common sense and protection. Five, wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared me. That is the formation of that tender one, that sprout that came from the dry ground, Isaiah 53. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, thou hast had no pleasure. That didn't please God. A second witness to that is Hosea chapter 6, verse 6, where God says, I do not want your burnt offerings. I want your love. I want you to love me. That is to say the grace, the mercy. And how could one not believe how could one not love him when one had seen the very thing that he did for us that made repentance possible that we could have that forgiveness of sins? Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book it is written of me to do thy will, O God. And that is this book, this volume, and your Savior. It was written long ago. Because, quite frankly, we're quoting Psalms 40, verse 8. Above when he said, Sacrifice and offering and burnt offerings and offerings for sin thou wouldest uh, not, neither hast pleasure therein, which are offered by the law. In other words, the law demanded it once a year. I mean, they, you had the um, Holy of Holies. And the old priest was told, you go on in there, you know, they put little tinkle bells on his shoes so that if something happened to him, they could reach in and maybe drag him out or something. Because if you went in and didn't handle it right, it was a death sentence. But there was that holy of holy, year after year, nobody could go near God. It was forbidden, except that chief priest. And... What is really amazing to me is that on the day that Christ was crucified and that at 3 p.m. when that prayer time came to pass and the chief priest on that day was supposed to enter that Holy of Holies, that veil was rent from top to bottom, not from bottom to the top, from top to the bottom by Almighty God where that would-be chief priest who was a fake at that day 
would have entered in, then God opened that holy of holies where you can come in. Why? Because of Isaiah 53, Christ paid the price for you. For just as that chief priest could walk in, you can. You can go in and talk to him because you're his child. He loves his children. And, and really what that signified and what it represented was the fact that the almighty God in heaven had opened his heart to you and made it possible through repentance for you to talk to him anytime you so chose. You didn't need some preacher. You didn't need some priest. You didn't need anyone because you are a child of God. Can you believe that report? You should. You weren't hatched out of an egg out here under a rock. You were given birth, and as you were in the beginning, so that same spirit entered this flesh body. And as God would say from that beginning in that report, let us create man in our image. Our is plural. And the word in the Hebrew is Elohim, which is plural itself, that you look just like you did there, just as Christ looked exactly as our Father looked. And Christ would say in John 14, as well as other places, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And, and so it was that that word, this word, this book, this volume of this book that he came in, that he is, for he is that living word, the word that gives you eternal life if you believe that report, if you believe that report from the beginning. Who will declare his name? His children will. Why? Well, you're going to find out here in a moment that he, at the resurrection, went to the right hand of God. And there he is. And he is there as a go-between between you and your enemies. It's not between you and God. You don't need a go-between between you and God because he ripped the veil from top to bottom where you can come in any time. But he stands there and sits as your attorney, as your comforter, to go between you and your enemies to see through the Holy Spirit that everything goes well. Do you know something? That is the same Spirit that will speak through God's elect and the very elect when they're delivered up before the spurious Messiah. That time is coming. It happens in and to this generation. So you might should realize you've got a destiny and a purpose if you believe. There are non-believers, and be that, hey, don't get all shook up. Go on, have, a, have your way. But to a believer, that love, that healing, he took the stripes, you get the healing, you get the blessings. Why? Because he paid that price for you. And those sins you committed, you repented of them, they're washed away. They're gone. Don't even bring it up because he has forgiven you and he doesn't want to hear about it again. How precious it is that he came in that volume of the book, page after page, chapter after chapter, book after book, giving instructions that are so very valuable. You know, you could pay a counselor $1,000 an hour and you would not receive as good a counsel as you will from this volume that he came in. You could never be uh, touched as that comforter can touch you from the volume of this book. The comfort, the very presence of the Holy Spirit when you share those sacred scriptures and when we partake of this precious sacrament, the very uh, sacraments that put us right in his presence. For when he spoke, that's exactly what he became. God provided the very sacrifice of all times in the Son, which is to say God with us. How precious it is to love and to know the living God and to know that he is with us, that he loves us. And, you know, probably one of the best things is your family 
He is your father. He's the closest relative you'll ever have. Why? He created your soul. He created your soul. And sometimes you may feel like you're all left out. And well, why? And then he wanted somebody just like you. Not for no reason at all, because he wanted someone just like you. Your DNA is different. Your fingerprints are different. You're unique because God loves you and he wanted you. He, he wants you to return that love. Why? Because you're his child. And he is one of your nearest, he is your nearest relative, the very creator of your being. So don't ever disallow yourself to believe that report from Isaiah 53, verse 1. The report, which is the volume of the book, which goes to Genesis chapter 1 and ends with Revelation chapter 22 and many verses in between, giving that advice and the wisdom and the knowledge. And so it is that that knowledge abounds. It's there for the taking. And when you feel insignificant, always realize you've got a destiny because that same comforter, that same Holy Spirit, that is the Spirit of the Father and the Son as they sit on the very altar itself, comforts you, touches your heart, and guides you in accomplishing the things. We have, we have an obligation and we have a duty and we will do it quite well. God's elect and the very elect. We will, naturally, with his leading and giving him all the credit and according to his will, put all of his enemies under his footstool, under his feet. We will do that. I've read the back of the book. We have the victory. That victory is ours and ours alone in loving him, worshiping him, that is to say, whomsoever will. Non-believers, how could they not believe? When, when you look at the troubles around this world and in the name of religion, what some people do, you know, I mean, it, it is a sad state of affairs where innocent people are butchered in the name of God, their God. That's, that is amazing to me. No. He gave his life whereby we can have eternal life. He gave his life, um, not that um, here on the earth, for God is not the God of the dead, but all live. Even Satan is alive. No one, no soul. Understand what I said. I didn't say no body. I said no soul has ever died. I'll say it again. There has never from the beginning of time has a soul perished? Why? Because the great white throne judgment has not taken place yet. And until that takes place, there will be no souls that die. For God is not the God of the dead, but the God of the living. Chapter 8, St. John, last verses, documentation. How precious it is that he loves his children. And you know something? You're one of those children if you love him. You are one of those children if you believe that report that God gave from the beginning. Let us create man in our image. And here you are, looking the same, same father, and the same earth, same heaven, different age, and that time marches on. But as, this, as moments change, the Nazarene, the Son of God, and our Heavenly Father never do. They will never leave us. They will never forsake us. They are always with us, and they will be with us until the very end, watching over, guiding, comforting. That's why when you read St. John chapter 14, the great uh, story of the Comforter coming, and certainly he did. He uh, abides with us, in us, through us, to accomplish the things that are written, especially in God's elect and the very elect. Does he utilize their very being to move things into a position whereby prophecies can come to pass exactly as they're written. You see, our Father always warns people, even the unbelievers, 
And that's what the obligation, the duty, and if you would, even the destiny of many of you is when you're delivered up with that Holy Spirit speaking through you, is to warn them. It is written in Luke 21 that what comes from your mouth, not you speaking, but the Holy Spirit, that even the gainsayers will be convinced by what you say, why, well, well, it's not you, it's the Holy Spirit. See, Christianity is not a religion, it's a reality. This volume is real, and he is real. His touch is real in your very heart. This word is real to your very mind. If you believe that report, if you follow that report, and if you love him, how precious it is that our Father gives us these things, that our Father shares with us the very being, our being, and yet at the same time instructs us, warns us. Is it not amazing? He doesn't get up and wonder, who can I catch um, off guard in ignorance and zap them? He doesn't zap somebody in ignorance because ignorance is a form of innocency, and our Father loves he does love his children, and, and uh, he expects that love to be returned. How precious it is to be a child of the living God. How very precious. We thank our Father for that um, ability that he has to touch you. All right. Listen just a moment, won't you please? The Mark of the Beast on CD is our free introductory offer to you. What is the Mark of the Beast? Many false teachers would have you believe it will be a tattoo on your forehead or a computer chip implanted under your skin. It is getting late in the game. You need to know what the mark of the beast is. As it's written in Revelation chapter 13, verse 8, many will be deceived. There is no need for you to be deceived. Christ said in Mark 13, 23, Behold, I have foretold you all things. Jesus indeed told us how not to be deceived, and Pastor Arnold Murray takes you on a step-by-step -step study of God's Word concerning this critical subject, the mark of the beast. The telephone call is free. The CD is free. We don't even ask for the shipping and handling. It is free as well. All you need to do is call 800-643-4645 to request your one-time, one-per-household copy of The Mark of the Beast. You may also request your free CD by mailing your request to Shepherd's Chapel, Post Office Box 416, Gravit, Arkansas, 72736. Don't be deceived by Satan. And there we are back again. He came in the volume of the book treasure that book, won't you? It's the content. It's the knowledge. Remember from Isaiah 53? His knowledge. His wisdom. All wisdom comes from him. Do you want to change in your life? That's where you find it. In the volume of the book. In him. That book that came to life and walked among us and paid this price that we have these sacraments that bring us closer to him. As a matter of fact, they're very healing. With his stripes, we are healed, especially at the time of communion. If you need a healing, that's the time. Ask and receive. So let's return back then to Hebrews chapter 10, where Christ is saying, and, and um, you know, the new is just a copy of the old. We could be reading these same verses, basically, in uh, Psalms 40. But here we are in this great book, and so it is. It's good to, to go to both to see that God's Word never changes. Man might sometimes. God doesn't. So back again, chapter 10, the great book of Hebrews, verse 9. Let's go with it. Then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first, that he may establish the second. In other words, it was fulfilled. Do you know something? Do you want to be successful in, in receiving God's touch and promise? You will adhere to what was said there. And he said, Lo, I come to do thy will. You, you want to do it God's way? You see, it's his plan, and it's his way. And if you truly love him after he paid that price for you, you don't want to do something that's not his will anyway. Sometimes you mind in ignorance, don't worry, he'll get your attention right quick. 
to always, when you proceed into something, ask that his will be done. And always give God the credit for the unction and the touch of the Holy Spirit that guides you and, and cares for you. And, and so it is that the, the Old Testament was fulfilled in the New. Christ was spoken of all through um, Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14. A virgin shall conceive and bear a child, and you shall call his name Emmanuel, being interpreted as God with you. It's all coming to pass before your very eyes in the volume of the book. Verse 10. By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once, I repeat, once for all. That's all that's necessary. Don't you go out and sacrifice some blood somewhere else or something else. That's sacrilegious. He was the sacrifice for one and all times to those that believe the report that are in the volume. Verse 11, and every priest standeth daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. Why would you have something like that when we've got the real thing? Christ, our Passover. I've, I've quoted that a time or two. Do you know where it's written? Because it's in the volume. It's 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7 and 8. Christ became our Passover. Period. Don't ever try to have any other Passover. He's it. <clears throat> verse 12. But this man, what, what man was that? Messiah, Christos, Yeshua, that is Jesus Christ, this man. After he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever set down on the right hand of God. <clears throat> Excuse me. And there he is today. You want to know where the Lord is? Physically, he's sitting by the right hand of God, but his Holy Spirit is everywhere. Whomever, who, wherever he intends to be. I am that I am, and so he is. 13. From henceforth, expecting or waiting till his enemies be made his footstool. It is wonderful that God has some very precious people, his elect and his re-elect, that follow his command, that follow the volume of the book, that stick with it. You could not pull them away from that. If, if, if it, um, they, would, they would teach for 60 years and never be pulled away from that word. And many people say, my goodness, 60 years. Well, that's how long I've taught. And nothing could ever separate me from teaching that word of God. It is so precious. And he paid such, paid such an awesome price to have that done. And there he waits. You might say, well, why, why does he wait so long? Every soul must have the opportunity to make its mind up whether it's going to worship God or Satan. Many are still being born. Until that transpires, um, the end shall not be. But we do know from the volume of the book, we're in the final generation. 14, for by one offering and one only, one offering he has perfected forever them that are sanctified. In the sight of God they are perfected, and who cares what somebody else's sight does? If you're in the sight of your Father, you're perfected, then that's what counts. That one offering, his own body. You might, and, and I don't want you to forget the fact, Emmanuel, that was God with us. Your heavenly Father accomplished it for you <clears throat> because you're not perfect. He was. 15. Whereof the Holy Spirit also is a witness to us. For after that he hath said before, in other words, that's the way we communicate with our Heavenly Father also through the volume of the book. It's the very Spirit of God. It's very real. And this is it. 16, this is the covenant that I will make with them. That's his children. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my laws into their hearts. That's their minds. And in their minds will I write them. And, and so it is that you want, you know, even in the millennium, you're not going to have to ask somebody if they know the Lord. 
they're going to know him because they're in spiritual bodies there to with 100% uh, recall and uh, of scripture and otherwise they certainly know the word of God is it's are they obedient are they disciplined I'm going to tell you a person that doesn't have discipline to serve God you want to be aware of you can never depend on them. They will always be somewhere where they're not supposed to be when God needs them. It takes a disciplined servant to serve the living God if you want his blessings. So serving him is easy. It's principle. And certainly after what he did for you, that shouldn't be that big of a step for a stepper to want to please him and to want to have things to his will. 17, and their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Don't ever bring them up. Don't ever bring them up. You know, you, when, when, uh, when, well, he forgave them. And if you bring them up, you're like saying, hey, he didn't forgive me. I, I really don't believe he forgave me. Do you know something? He doesn't like that because you're kind of mocking him, you're almost calling him a liar. And how, how, how wonderful do you think it would be for you if you called Almighty God, the creator of all things, a liar? You see, that wouldn't pay any dividends at all. You want to let him know that you love him. Don't bring it up again after you ask for that forgiveness and repent of it and thank him for having forgiven you, <clears throat> then don't bring it up again. Verse 18. Now, where remission of these is, where these things are totally forgotten, is there, there is no more offering for sin. Doesn't need to. Why? And, and this is the answer to a lot of people that say, well, I still have to answer for this on, on uh, the, at the great black throne judgment. Your answer is right there. There is no offering because it doesn't exist. In other words, when God forgives your sins, it doesn't exist. Forget it. Verse 19. <clears throat> Having therefore, brethren, boldness, to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. Christ's blood allows you, after that veil was rent from top to bottom, to walk right in and say, Father, I love you. I need you. I want to understand the volume of that book. For he is your Father. And that one, he paid that price so that inasmuch as it was he that paid the price, Emmanuel, God with us, he said, now you can come on and talk to me anytime you want to because you're my child. And that's exactly the way he is and why he is, is boldly. I mean, don't, don't be sheepish about it. Go in and let him know that you love him. Next verse, please, verse 20. By a new and living way which he hath consecrated for us <clears throat> through the veil, that is to say, his flesh. In other words, his flesh ripped that veil away. And, and, and you know what? It happened just as he, as his spirit returned to the Father for that moment. He went and he preached, and never thinking of, of just self. He went and preached to those that are on the wrong side of the gulf, as uh, Luke 16 declares and let them be free. Never wasted a moment. And, um, and so it is that that consecration takes place through his flesh. That's why the sacrament is so ever so very, very important. Because he be, it, it's symbolic. It's not symbolic. It is him. It is. And he said that we should partake of this until he returns and partakes of it with us anew the same sacraments that we will have. That's why it is written for one and all times. Verse 21, to continue. And having an high priest over the house of God. Who is that high priest? Melchizedek, that's Melchizedek, king of the righteous. That is to say, God's elect. 
There's only one, and and so and that is the Lord Jesus Christ. He was Melchizedek in the beginning, not born to a woman at that time, because it was in spirit form. The King of kings and Lord of lords. And why should he not have that privilege and that right? Because he paid that price. God with us. Uh, how precious it is that that high priest is there. You know, God always wanted to be our king and our priest, and man wouldn't have it. No, I want a king I can see here. And boy, you get a piece of flesh and there's a chunk of meat, and Lord only knows what they'll try to lead you into. <clears throat> Stick to the volume, the book. Stick to the Heavenly Father. Do you believe the report? That very first verse of Isaiah 53, you see, it's very, very true. Verse 22, let us draw near with a true heart. Don't try to con him. In full assurance, you can expect and, and, and appreciate full confidence of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. He is that living water. He is that water that washes us, that cleanses us, that gives us that eternal life. And, and do, you know, do you know what it, uh, it costs you? Nothing. It is yours for the taking. It cost him an awesome price. You see, he suffered the cross for it so that you could have that simply for the asking. But why, why would he do that? Because he loves you if you have that faith in him. If you believe the report, this report, this book, this volume in which he came, then uh, so it is that you are washed. And there you have it. Verse 23. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith. Have you got faith? Without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. You know, he's faithful. The question is, are you? That, that's, that's the big question. It's easy to be faithful to him when you consider all that he's done for you. Because in being faithful to him, you have his blessings. Otherwise, you might as well get set for some extremely hard knocks in this life. Because they're out there. They will abuse you, use you, and, and turn you back to the dogs and never whimper or say a word about it. They don't care. But he does. He came in that volume. Do you believe the report? In believing that report, then you know and understand that our Father loves you. Let us approach his throne. Heavenly Father, thank you, Father, for the privilege of being allowed to serve you. Thank you, Father, for this platform that goes around the world where people can enjoy that volume, that book, chapter by chapter and verse by verse. And thank you for the power that the Holy Spirit allows us to touch the hearts of people, not us, but you, through that word and through these sacraments that we're about to partake of. Thank you, Father. We love you so much. In Jesus, Yeshua's precious name, amen. And take your sacraments at this time, put them before you. First, we take the bread. And do you remember what was written? The bread is his body. And his body took the stripes. You get to heal. Now, as you're partaking of this Holy Communion, if you have a loved one, you know, just as he does things in proxy, you can also. If you have a loved one that really needs the touch of that Holy Spirit, stand in for them at this time. Take this communion for them. God allows it. It's intercessory um, sacraments at that time. And, and God will bless that. He certainly will. So we go to his throne, and on the night that Jesus was betrayed, even on that night, he took the bread and he broke it, 
And he said, this is my body that is broken for you. Take ye and eat you all of it. Partake of the bread. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for that body. Thank you for he that became the volume of the book. Thank you for the promises. The promises that you tell us in Isaiah chapter 43, verse 26, that we should remind you of. And when we remind you of them, you can justify us. We know you haven't forgot them. You want to know if we know them. We do, Father, and we thank you for that. Thank you for this bread that heals the body of Christ and our bodies receiving that healing. Thank you, Father, in Yeshua's precious name. You know, it's a wonderful thing to be loved of Almighty God that he gives us this privilege of serving him and being in him. It's so much better to know the volume of the book and to know and to believe the report and to be blessed of the living God. You see, he's with us in that he blesses us even in these sacraments. That's so very real and we thank him for that. In Jesus' precious name. Soon after, <clears throat> he took the cup and he blessed it. And he said, this is my blood that is shed for many. Take ye and drink ye all of it. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Father, for the precious blood that forgives all sins on repentance, that any sinner, wherever they may be, whatever they have done, repent, because the blood of Christ overcomes all sin, and it is erased. It is, don't remember it anymore, don't bring it up anymore. How precious it is to partake of that sacrament and to know that he loves us. Thank you, Father, for the privilege of serving you again. We ask it in Yeshua's precious name. And there you have the sacraments, the sacraments that Christ stated. When you gather, and they gathered on Passover, on Pentecost, and the Feast of Tabernacles, that's three times a year. Take it anew, and take it until I return to take it anew with you. That, that's a promise in itself. Do you realize that? He's returning, and he's coming back soon. He's coming back, not as a babe this time, but he's coming back for what these sacraments uh, signify. He's coming back as King of Kings and Lord of Lords, not to be crucified again, but to rule with a rod of iron, and so he will. So how precious it is to expect from him healings and to be blessed with the truth, the word. You know, there is no need in being confused in this world today. You see, it, it comes down to two things. That is to say, the conflict is between our Heavenly Father and Satan. And the reason our Father made these things possible is because of Satan to strengthen you against him, to give you power and control over him, and to bring those that will believe the report into the very family of God, to be under that wing of that great eagle of Almighty God, his protection with us always when you become a part of that family by believing whomsoever will it's your choice. You know, what's written in the book of life, you can't blame on somebody else. You did it. Therefore, when you repent for it, he can erase it. But you decide whether you're going to heaven or hell. That's why taking the sacraments, that's why taking the volume and the knowledge you receive from it, Right, is a form of resurrection that it raises you to a higher level of thinking. That's one of the meanings of, re of resurrection.
to be raised to a higher level of thinking by the volume of the book. Don't pass by that. And always remember, his body took the stripes. Yours gets the healing. He blessed the cup. And for the to wash away the sins of the world, if you believe the report, how precious it is to be allowed, even allowed to serve him. It is a privilege and an honor to be part of that family of the living God and to be called a child of God rather than a child of the devil. Satan works many ways. You gotta be real sharp. Do not ever you know, Satan will use a child of God if he has a chance, if he can find the weak one. And that's, that's what makes Satan very tricky, and he knows that. So you always must be on guard to know and to understand from the volume of the book. We're family, and treat people as family if they believe in the volume of the book. So there you have Holy Communion. I love you all because you enjoy studying God's Word chapter by chapter and verse by verse, but most of all, your Father loves you for it. You know what? It's the letter He sent to you, and Christ became that volume. And when you partake in it, it makes His day. And when you make His day, boy, is He going to make yours. You can receive a blessing. Don't ever forget it. We're, we are brought to you by your tithes and offerings if we've helped you, and only if we've helped you, you help us keep coming to you. Once you do that, you bless God. He will always bless you. You're his child. Don't ever forget that. Now, most important, though, you listen to me good. You stay in his word every day. And his word is a good day, even with trouble, the volume of the book. You know why? Jesus is the living word. Hearing God's word with understanding will change your life. We hope you have enjoyed studying God's Word here on the Shepherd's Chapel Family Bible Study Hour with Pastor Arnold Murray. If you would like to receive more information concerning Shepherd's Chapel, you may request our free introductory offer. Our introductory offer contains the Mark of the Beast audio tape, our monthly newsletter with a written Bible study, a tape catalog, and a list of written reference works available through Shepherd's Chapel. To request our free introductory offer by telephone, call 800-643-4645, 24 hours a day. You may also request our introductory offer by writing to Shepherd's Chapel, Post Office Box 416, Gravit, Arkansas, 72736. Once again, that's Shepherd's Chapel, Post Office Box 416, Gravit, Arkansas. 72736. We invite you to join us for the next in-depth Bible study each weekday at this same time. Thank you for watching today's program and God bless you. The Mark of the Beast on CD is our free introductory offer to you. What is the Mark of the Beast? Many false teachers would have you believe it will be a tattoo on your forehead or a computer chip implanted under your skin. It is getting late in the game. You need to know what the Mark of the Beast is. As it's written in Revelation chapter 13, verse 8, many will be deceived. There is no need for you to be deceived. Christ said in Mark 13, 23, Behold, I have foretold you all things. Jesus indeed told us how not to be deceived, and Pastor Arnold Murray takes you on a step-by-step -step study of God's Word concerning this critical subject, the mark of the beast. The telephone call is free. The CD is free. We don't even ask for the shipping and handling. It is free as well. All you need to do is call 800-643-4645 to request your one-time, one-per-household copy of The Mark of the Beast. You may also request your free CD by mailing your request to Shepherd's Chapel, Post Office Box 416, Gravit, Arkansas, 72736. Don't be deceived by Satan.
Welcome to the Shepherd's Chapel Network Family Bible Study Hour with Pastor Arnold Murray. Wisdom is understanding God's Word. Pastor Murray's unique teaching approach brings God's Word alive with meaning as he takes you on a chapter-by-chapter, verse-by-verse study of God's letter to you, the Bible. And now here is Pastor Arnold Murray. Good day to you. God bless you. Say, welcome to the Shepherd's Chapel. Welcome to this family Bible study hour. Today's topic, millennium. What does uh, millennium, however, it's not even written as such in the Word of God. But what is it? What does the word mean? Well, it's made up of two words. It's made up of mil, which is um, thousand, and then 